तीन नजर आ रही है गुड मॉर्निंग एवरी वन थैंक यू फॉर ज्वाइनिंग दिस क्रिटिकल डिस्कशन द टॉपिक टूडे क्लाइमेट चेंज एंड हेल्थ सिक्योरिटी इज आर्ग्यूबली द मोस्ट डिफाइनिंग चैलेंज ऑफ आर जनरेशन वी आर हेयर बिकॉज द एविडेंस इज ओवरवेलमिंग let's start with a stark but necessary statement the scientific consensus is clear climate change and global warming are unequivocal and are happening now as the lancet famously stated climate change is the biggest global health threat of the 21st century this isn't just an environmental issue it is a fundamental health security issue when we talk about health security we must recognize that health systems have a dual responsibility first to address health outcomes with preparedness but second and just as important to lead the drive to protect health from climate change the threats are already here and we need a systematic response over the next 40 minutes we will follow this outline first we will detail the health impacts and vulnerability what is being affected and who is most at risk second we will explore the links between climate change poverty and integrated planning finally we will review a framework for health sector action what practical steps we must take now our goal is to move from awareness to action recognizing that a health focused approach offers us some of the most effective and cost efficient solutions let's begin by examining the immediate impacts on health climate change fundamentally undermines the most basic requirements for good health think about the four pillars of public health clean air safe water sufficient food and adequate shelter climate change is compromising all four of these pillars globally the pathways from climate change to health are both direct and complex the direct effects are the most visible increased frequency of heat waves severe forms storms and flooding but the complex indirect pathways are more insidious these direct pathways include changes in infectious disease transmission things like altered distribution of malaria or dengue they also include disruptions of ecosystems and agricultural yields leading to displacement conflict over depleted resources like fertile land and water and malnutrition
Particularly, these health impacts are not distributed equally. Climate change is a regressive burden on society. The people most, vul most vulnerable are those with existing challenges. Low education levels, poverty, food insecurity, and those relying on substance farming. These are the same populations who have the fewest resources to adopt. Let's look at a specific regional example. The East Mediterranean region or, e or EMR is identified as being particularly vulnerable. Why? Because of its arid nature and its heavy reliance on rain-fed food production. This makes the population extremely sensitive to changes in rainfall and increased drought frequency. The specific health threats in the EMR are stark, water scarcity and quality issues leading to diarrheal diseases, heat-related morbidity and, mort and mortality due to extreme heat and changes in vector-borne diseases like leishmaniasis and Rift Valley fever. The health security of this region is already under pressure. To summarize this section, climate change attacks the fundamental conditions for health and it targets the most vulnerable among us first. This brings us directly to the necessary intersection of climate change with poverty, reduction, and planning. The three concepts, poverty, ecosystem, and climate are are extricably linked. Climate change impacts operate through transmission mechanisms that directly affect the multiple dimensions of poverty. It is a vicious circle. Poverty exacerbates vulnerability and climate change pushes more people into poverty. Consider the direct impacts on poverty, extreme events such as floods, droughts, or storms cause direct property and asset destruction, reducing the ability of poor households to recover and adopt. The health system takes the blunt of this, managing the immediate crisis. This nexus means that the response cannot come from the health sector alone. Ministries of planning, finance, agriculture, and water must integrate prospective climate and health risks into their development frameworks. We need integrated planning. The good news is that we have proven cost-effective interventions that are win-win. They save lives now, reduce vulnerability to climate change, these include clean water and sanitation programs, strengthening vector control measures, improving disaster risk reduction and early warning systems. Investing in these areas not only addresses 
current health security issues, but builds long-term resilience against future climate-related shocks. This is an efficient use of development aid and national budgets. So the central message here is that protecting health from climate change is synonymous with sustainable development and poverty reduction. We need to stop seeing this as an add-on and start seeing it as an essential feature of all national planning. Now, let's focus specifically on the framework of actions within the health sector. The first and most critical step is understanding the threat profile. This requires health-related vulnerability and adoption B and A assessments. A V and A assessment identifies which populations are most vulnerable and crucially assesses the capacity of our health system to manage the effects. Once we know the risk, we must implement early warning systems, EWS, for health hazards. This is a fundamental and climate sensitive health risks, allowing us to strengthen surveillance and response before a crisis hits. Uh, WHO framework outlines three levels. The WHO framework outlines three high-level objectives that guide our actions. Objective one, ensure that public health concerns and health protection are at the core of the entire climate change response. Health must be central to policy discussion. Objective two, strengthen the health sector's capacity for adaptation, making our hospitals, clinics, and surveillance systems resilient to floods, heat, and new disease patterns. Objective three, support healthy development strategies in other sectors. This means actively advocating for policies in transport, energy, and housing that reduce greenhouse gas emissions. This third objective leads to one of the most compelling arguments for action, the health co-benefits of mitigation. When the other sectors like transport or energy adopt policies to reduce emissions, we see substantial and immediate health gains. For instance, reduced air pollution from cleaner energy or more walking, cycling provides an immediate local repayment on investment. In conclusion, we have established three points. Number one, climate change is the 21st century biggest health threat, directly attacking the foundations of human health. Number two, the challenge is magnified by its strong link to poverty, requiring an integrated planning response. Number three, 
a package of health protection measures centered on V and A assessments and early warnings is feasible, comparatively cheap, and highly likely to be effective. What is still needed? The global health community agrees on the importance of this work, but countries still need additional policy, technical capacity building, and financial support to fully protect and promote health. WHO's rule, the World Health Organization and its partners are committed to providing this support, offering technical guidance, policy framework, and project design based on our own experience managing climate sensitive diseases. The work is ongoing, but the urgency is paramount. We have dedicated the time to lay the foundation for a response to this challenge. Thank you for your attention. If there are any questions, they can be directly sent to the email given muhammad.umayath at afihs.edu.pk. I look forward towards communicating with you and working together to make this world a better place to live. Thank you very much. Thanks for your time.